Star Wars 7x7 episode 2798. So Galactic Star Cruiser is now open at Walt Disney World. The first reviews are in and I thought I'd take a look and see what people are saying about it. Punch it! <laughs> Hey Rebel Rouser, I'm Alan Voivod and this is Star Wars 7x7, your daily dose of Star Wars joy. And thank you so much for joining me for it. So apparently there have been two different press previews of the Galactic Star Cruiser thing. I mean, there's been all sorts of, you know, people going in and saying, oh, this is great, or I had this experience, or whatever. But the final two official ones, one of them was sort of a four-hour preview where they gave people a taste of what was happening on the Star Cruiser, and another was a full-on two-day complete experience. And according to San Francisco Gate, which is where I saw the initial first reviews of it, or at least collections thereof, generally the experience is positive, but it really is about what you bring to it as a passenger. The first thing that I saw actually out of you know everything out there, when I saw it trending on Twitter, just Galactic Star Cruiser, nothing positive, negative, neutral, or anything, I clicked it open and the first phrase I read was windowless bunker, which does not sound like an attractive possibility or even a very good start to where the reviews were going. But yeah, it ends up kind of going with a negative lead for all intents and purposes. In fact, staying with San Francisco Gate, they're saying reviews are generally positive, especially praising the character actors who carry the experience, then with a few caveats, because the hotel itself is supposed to be a luxury cruise ship in space. The biggest complaint is that rooms are small and cramped. Standard rooms have a queen bed, bunk beds, and an additional pull-out sleep space, which means it's theoretically able to sleep five adults, but most, re <laughs> most reviews are agreeing that it would feel tight even with three people, especially considering the bathroom only has a single sink, and unlike other luxury hotels there are no typical amenities like a pool or a spa but based on the rest of the reviews including this one it's not as if it's really giving you time to do that and in fact it seems like it's not really designed for that kind of experience. In fact, Amy Ratcliffe, who has been a guest on this podcast, is a podcaster herself and now a managing editor of Nerdist, says that it's a very active cruise, and if you want a relaxing Star Wars vacation, this isn't it. The ship doesn't have much in the way of leisure activities aside from sitting in the atrium or the lounge, and while a good day of boozing in the lounge sounds like a good time, you're paying a lot of money for this vacation, plus the drinks aren't inexpensive. I hopped from one activity to the next, and even with the short time I went to my cabin to change for dinner and charge my phone, I missed events and activities. The schedule so overflows or overflows so much that the finale even cut into dinner on the final night. Continuing on, I guess somebody from Forbes who writes about Disney parks was there and says that it's the farthest thing from a traditional hotel. While there are a hundred guest cabins on board, the experience is more of a simulated cruise that's part immersive theater, part escape room, and all Star Wars. And I won't go into spoiler territory on any of this, and some of the reviews that are out there do go into spoiler territory. I will say that the Nerdist review is definitely very spoiler free by comparison with everything else and also Nerdist is one of the places and I think Slash Film is another where they have a couple of great you know what to expect before you go articles and how best to prepare for the experience now that some people have actually been through the whole experience. CNN Travel also had a representative there they say that the events on the Star Cruiser are inextricably linked to the very rides and market stalls of Black Spire Outpost and its planet Batu, where you disembark for an adventure on the second day of your stay before returning to the ship for a showstopper finale on the final night of the experience. They go on to say that if you're ready for an adventure with little downtime and a fast-paced schedule, this is the Disney excursion for you, and if you want to explore the Disney parks afterward, build it in a day to catch up on rest. So the intensity of the schedule and action is meant for Star Wars fans who want to live out their own you know, best Star Wars story and best Star Wars life. They also say it's not something for supreme introverts because the Star Cruiser experience relies on passengers getting involved in the story themselves. It makes you feel like you're a character in a Star Wars video game. There's no other time you'll be able to test your stealth by sneaking away from First Order Stormtroopers. BuzzFeed says the more you do, the more interesting everything gets on it. Cast members on Batuu will comment about the characters on the ship during the planetary excursion, and crew members will slip you secret notes when you start asking questions and spreading Star Cruiser gossip. 
And CNET refers to it as a living video game with multiple story paths. Improv actors are buzzing about in makeup, getting stage direction from earpieces and remembering little details about what you've been up to. Actors reveal a piece of themselves with every conversation, some scripted and others improvised. As for non-Star Wars fans, if you will, because when they were marketing this in the run-up to things, Disney was saying that this is supposed to be an experience for Star Wars fans and the people who love Star Wars fans, so their family members who love Star Wars fans. Amy Ratcliffe probably puts it best by saying, you know, I don't think it's a vacation for people who aren't into Star Wars. If you're not a Star Wars fan or if you only have a passing interest, she says, I'm just not sure you'll feel drawn in enough to go all in. And I'm just, you know, particularly picking her as a representative of many of the other stories that I was reading and checking out about this. Ultimately, what it sounds like is for the price of the experience, which is still, you know, way up there, you know, and hey, that's fine. It is what it is. But for the price that you're paying for it, it seems like the people who are going to enjoy this experience most are the people who are you know the you know deepest in the blood star wars fans and i'm expressing that in terms of you know whether you want to be immersed in a star wars experience i'm not trying to codify star wars fans by whether they're sequel trilogy fans or prequel trilogy fans or original trilogy fans no it's just how deep in the blood it is for you whether you want to throw yourself into a story whether i mean i don't I don't think even necessarily cosplay has to go into this or you know kind of inventing your own character and going into it it doesn't necessarily have to be that deep within you but it has to be deep enough where you want to become part of the story in some fashion and to address the whole introvert thing like yeah you may want to be immersed but you may not want to interact so much well they have their Disney Parks app and there are things that happen on that which turns it into a data pad basically and you can send text messages to people and get assignments and stuff so there are things that are apparently designed for the introverts out there but there are also sort of you know competing comments about that saying that you know, they didn't necessarily want to spend so much time with their faces in their phones. They wanted to be, you know, looking outward and ooh and aahing at the whole experience. So that's what the deal is with the Galactic Star Cruiser. Apparently a very enjoyable experience if you want to be thrown into that kind of almost, you know, immersive theater, dinner theater kind of like environment. But again, reviews generally positive. Maybe pacing needs to work, but also expectation that you are not <laughs> going there to relax by any stretch of the imagination. And I also want to give a shout out to Charlotte and Caitlin of the Sky Talkers podcast. I was checking out a lot of their TikToks about this. They were incredibly thorough in documenting their experience on it. And there is spoilery stuff on their TikToks as well. But yeah, that was great fun. They did a wonderful job of taking you with them on that whole experience. So kudos to you, Charlotte and Caitlin. And that is going to do it for this episode of the show. It just remains for me to say thank you so much for joining me for it as always. And may the force be with you wherever in the world you may be. Star Wars 7x7 is not endorsed or sponsored yet by Lucasfilm Limited, Disney, or 20th Century Fox and is intended for entertainment and information purposes only. Star Wars, the Star Wars logo, all names and pictures of Star Wars characters, vehicles, and any other Star Wars related items are registered trademarks and or copyrights of Lucasfilm Limited by their respective trademark and copyright holders. May the force be with them. All original content is copyright 2021 by Star Wars 7x7. We hope you love it.